In this video, I'm gonna go over some basic watercolor techniques. So going over the things that I have in front of me, if you want to prepare yourself, I've got a piece of paper. You could probably do this with just some regular drawing paper. You could do it with watercolor paper. Um, that's what I have. This is just a basic watercolor set. Um, the lid is clean, which is important. I've got two jars of water. I have two brushes. I have an, a size 10 flat brush and I have a size four round brush. It's not important that the sizes be exactly the same, but something kind of close. I've got a palette with some rubbing alcohol in it and with some table salt. I have a piece of plastic saran wrap and I have two crayons. One is white. It doesn't matter what the other color is. A straw, a Q-tip, and just a piece of tissue. So first I wanna talk about how to load your brush using watercolor. So if the watercolor set hasn't been used recently, the colors are gonna be dry and you're going to need to add water to activate the color. So if, I'm, if I wanna use brown, I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in the water and then I'm gonna add some water to that brown color. When you are painting, the less water that you use, the more opaque that color will be. The more water you use, the lighter it will be. So if I add some water, it's gonna be lighter. Or if I continue to add water to this color, it's gonna get lighter and lighter also. So sometimes you're gonna to want to use the case to mix your colors on, or even just to get the value right. So if I wanted to make up a very light, transparent brown, I'm gonna add some water to the case. And the more water that I add, the more transparent that layer will be. And then I might put my brush into the brown and stir it here. So now when I add that color or that wash to my paper, you can see that it's a lot thinner and more transparent. A lot of people, when they paint with watercolors, they will layer their, their colors slowly like this to build, to build their painting. They let a layer dry and then they add another layer on top. And when you do that, you can kind of blend your colors by looking through your layers. So if I add another layer on top of this after it's dry, it's almost like those two colors will be blended together because I'm looking through both of them. So it's important to know how to do that. Also, um, if, if there were dried paint on this case, it would mix once I start stirring this brown up, that dried paint would get wet again and mix with whatever color I was trying to make. That's why it's important to clean the case each time you use it. So you may have seen me getting water and stirring my paintbrush in the jars over here. I wanna explain why I have two jars of water. This first jar, the one on the left, I'm using to rinse my brush off. So this jar of water is gonna get dirty fairly quickly. The second jar of water, I try to keep that one clean. So if I'm adding water to my colors, I'm getting that out of this second jar of cleaner water. So, when you start using two jars of water like this, it doesn't matter which one's on the left or which one's on the right, but whatever you choose to do, keep it consistent. That way you'll intuitively go to the right bottle over after you've been painting for a while, your body will just know to go to which bottle that you need without having to think as much about it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is an even wash. I'm gonna use my flat brush to do that and you can choose whatever color you want. I'm gonna choose the blue. I'm gonna get some clean water. I'm gonna put it in my blue paint. The thing that you need to know about making an even wash is that you need to go quickly because if I paint an area and it dries too fast, that's when I'm gonna see a line. Paint it quickly and go back over it, evening things out. You have to pay attention to how much paint and water is on your paper because you don't want it to puddle up in one specific area. So I'm gradually making this bigger so that I can spread that paint out so it won't puddle. 
and I'm going over areas where it looks like there's too much paint and too much, too much water. If you have too much water on your paper and you can't just keep making the area bigger, you can always wipe your brush off a little bit and then go back into it. You gotta be careful though because if your brush is too dry, you might start pulling stuff up. So it's really a delicate process. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how to do a gradation. So making a color go gradually from light to dark just using water. So I'm gonna use green this time. And I'm gonna start with the area that's gonna be darker. So I'll go dark to light, top to bottom. So I'm gonna put the color at the top. And then I'm gonna gradually add water while it's still wet to pull that pigment down. So there's a gradated wash or a graduated wash. Now we're going to do a gradation from one color into another color. So let's do yellow to orange. I'm going to go left to right this time. So I'm going to start with the yellow and I'm going to put that on right here and I'm going to gradually, I'm going to add water and gradually move to the right. And then you gotta work fast. I'm gonna add orange to the right hand side. I'm gonna leave some space in the middle. That's where they're gonna mix. And then I'm gonna add water as I move to the left. And they're still wet right here, so they're gonna blend together. I've got too much water, so I'm gonna dry off my brush and go back in. There's another technique that I want you to be aware of, and that's called painting wet into wet. So I'm gonna paint an area on my paper with just water. And there's a variety of things that you can do with this. You could just paint it straight with a color and then paint another color into that, but wet into wet means you're putting wet paint onto a wet surface. So I guess maybe I'll use my round brush this time. Let's go with some purple. So I'm gonna go into the, the wet paper with some wet pigment. You can do this with just one color. You can blend colors together. You can play around with what you can do with this. But they just kind of bleed in a different way when you put wet color onto a wet surface. It should stop wherever the water is on your paper. So if you've painted an area and it's dry and you don't want it to go into that area, if you just paint wherever you want your paint to go, that's where you stop your water. So you can see the edge of my square is like right around here. So the colors are just bleeding up to the edge of that wet surface and stopping. You'll notice that the edges in the wet into wet square are a little bit softer. I'm gonna show you another way to soften your edges if you need to, um, if you're not painting wet into wet. So if I'm just gonna paint a shape. And right now the edges are fairly hard. 
I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And then my brush has a little bit of water on it, but not a lot. And now I'm just gonna go around the edge while it's still a little bit wet. So if you want your edges to look soft or out of focus, that's one way that you could do that. The next couple of squares, um, I'm gonna show you use the salt and the rubbing alcohol. Salt and rubbing alcohol both repel the watercolor, so they just do it in different ways and the texture is a little bit different. So we're gonna try that out. So choose the color. And you want it to be fairly wet. Like right now I've got a lot of just straight up pigment. It's not super wet. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. I want some more water than that. Um, the water will allow the paint to move, the color to travel. So if it's repelling the, the salt or the rubbing alcohol, um, it needs to at least be wet enough to, to travel some. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of salt. And you'll see that it starts getting lighter around those areas. Because it's pushing the color away. In a little bit, I'll wipe the, once it's dry, I'll wipe the salt off and you can see what it looks like. I'm going to do another square. And I might blend some colors for this square. So I'm going to paint it purple. And then I'm going to add some blue. And I'm not going to completely mix them. All right, so for the rubbing alcohol, there's several different ways you can do it. I've got a straw, I'm gonna use that first. If you're using a straw, don't put your finger on the end, otherwise it's gonna suck up all the al alcohol. We're not siphoning the alcohol. I'm just gonna dip the edge of the straw into the rubbing alcohol, and then I'm gonna drop it here, and you can see how it just repels the watercolor. The straw allows you to have that center that's still has pigment in it. Um, and then the Q-tip, we'll do it a little bit differently. Do the Q-tip down here. So these both do very similar things. They just look a little bit different. Another cool trick is using saran wrap. So I'm gonna paint a square down here. I think I'm gonna blend a little bit of blue and green together. Saran wrap is really cool, plastic wrap, whatever. Um, it's really cool because it can kind of look like water, the texture of water, which is why I'm choosing to use blue and green. So I'm gonna take the plastic wrap, and I didn't need this big of a piece, but I'm gonna put it here and make sure that it has some wrinkles in it. And then I'm just gonna let it sit like this. You can already see the, the texture a little bit through the saran wrap on the paper. But I'm gonna press down and I'm gonna leave it and let it dry there while I work over here. And I'll pull it up in just a second. So next I'm gonna show you something called dry brush. So you can use, like old brushes might work better for this. I'm gonna to try to use one of these to show you though. You wanna get some paint on your brush. And basically it's just what it says. You're gonna get your brush so that it's not quite so wet and then you're gonna use it on your paper. And you can see that texture is called dry brush. 
Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice to see how, how it's gonna look, and it just really depends on the brush too. Um, this brush is a fairly new brush, an older brush, it would be a lot easier to have some of this texture show up because the bristles would be kind of separated. They wouldn't hold together as well. Another cool thing you can do is lift color after it's dry. So up here, this square's had time to dry now. I'm gonna add some water on top of it. And I'm kind of like pushing it into the surface. If you push into it too much, like I'm making these little circles, if you do it too much, your paper is gonna start crumbling, so be aware of that. And I've got a tissue over here that I'm gonna press down and lift some of that color up. So you can do that a couple of times to get it wider. Just be careful that you don't start breaking up the fibers of your paper. But you can, you can lift some of that color up and sometimes you can get a nice look that way. You can also use a tissue for an interesting look to pull up color when it's still wet. You got to be kidding me. Well, I hadn't meant to include that in the video, but since that just happened and I managed to clean it up, let me show you how I cleaned it up. So if for some reason something like that happens and you get like paint on your paper and it's not where you want it, lift up as much as you can before it dries and then I got water on it, stirred it around and then lifted that up. So things like that happen. And if you take care of it quickly, sometimes you can fix things. So now I really am gonna show you how to lift some color while it's still wet and I'm gonna be a little more careful. So I'm gonna paint a blue square here And while this is still wet, I'm gonna use a tissue and show you what it looks like to do it while it's wet. This might be a really cool way to make some clouds. The last thing that I'm gonna show you is how to do a crayon resist. So the wax in the crayon is another thing that repels watercolor. So if I, I'm gonna just draw a triangle. If I draw a triangle on here with a white crayon, that's gonna block the watercolor from the paper. So when I paint right over it, that crayon's gonna show up. You can do this with other colors too. I, that's why I've got the red crayon. I thought I would just show you what it looks like if you were to paint another color on top of a different colored crayon. So my square is not quite dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up to show you what it looks like. And lifting it at various stages is just gonna give you different textures. So um, that's just what it looks like when you use plastic wrap. So I tried to give you a lot of different things that you could learn and use. Practice with them. See if you can figure out what textures work for different things. And when you clean up the paint set, make sure that you clean the case. You don't want to leave this so that the next time you're trying to mix colors into this, it blends with the dried paint underneath it. And then to wash the brushes, make sure that you're washing them and, and rinsing them out. You should probably be using soap and that is all. I hope you learned a little bit and that you're ready to have some fun with some watercolor.